Hey guys, we are back on the North Sidebound YouTube channel with another Cubs prospect profile. My name is Greg Huss, and today we're digging into the top, the 10th ranked prospect in the Cubs organization, according to my rankings. If you're looking for other prospect profiles, I've got plenty of them already here on the YouTube channel on North Sidebound. I've got Kevin Alcantara, PCA, Owen Casey, Jefferson Rojas, Matt Shaw. I think that's it. I think that's all I've got so far. I've got another one still to come. But like I said, today we're talking about James Trianzos. Uh, this is a guy that performed admirably as a 21-year-old down, or a 20-year-old, I guess, uh, down in the Arizona Fall League this, this offseason. But for this video, we're going to dig into five different elements, right? The first is kind of overviewing his 2023 campaign statistically and looking at those numbers. And then we'll get into the strengths, weaknesses, potential outcomes, and then timeline for when we might see him in Chicago, making his way up to the big league level. So let's start off by digging into the numbers, right? So I've got this, this player card here. Uh, James Triantos logged 363 plate appearances in the 2023 season. Um, part of that was of not getting a full season was he got to off to a late start after a, a knee surgery during spring training. Uh, he battled his way back and eventually made his way up to high, end south, or high A South Bend and got most of the season at that level before that cup of coffee to end the year um, in double a Tennessee for 13 plate appearances. You'll see up here is the combined, uh, standard stats. That's a 287 batting average, 364 on base percentage, both incredibly impressive numbers. The slugging is a little bit lower at 391. Um, but that creates an OPS of 755, which is better than league average a WRC plus according to fan graphs, that's better than league average. And according to my bash metric, which accounts for league average uh, league adjustments it accounts for ballpark adjustments and age adjustment adjustments that's a 114 bash which is also very impressive you'll see that the dude refused to strike out part of that is because he refused to swing and miss here with 8.1 percent uh and really like he didn't walk um less than like i think in terms of like the number of strikeouts you got from him at 10.7 percent like a, a, a 9.6 percent walk rate is really impressive just below league average so way better than league average strikeout rates, just below league average walk rates. You'll take that every single day of the week with James Trantos. You saw more power out of him once he reached the Arizona Fall League. That Those stats are not accounted for in these numbers here that you'll see on the screen. Uh, but just an overall really good statistically uh, driven season from James Trantos. So let's dig into what he did so well and how he does it so well. So offensively, I think that you're looking at a profile with James Trianzo. So with, with the Matt Shaw, if you go back and watch the Matt Shaw video, I talked about comparing him to Nico Horner quite a bit. And I think that James Trianzo gets that treatment a little bit as well. Um, I'll You'll hear me toss around Matt Shaw's name in comparisons with James Trianzo quite a bit because they are very, very similar players. So uh, James, James Trianzo is a high contact guy, much like Matt Shaw. He is a guy that has some power tucked in there, I think. Uh, kind of like Matt Shaw, um, and then the defensive profile is a little um, a little worrisome, I guess. But strengths wise, the dude makes contact with just about everything he wants to. Um, if he's swinging, he's swinging and he's making contact. Um, it's one of the more impressive skills in the entire organization. Like I said with Shaw, like I think James Triantos and Matt Shaw are one A one B in terms of their ability to have a great feel to hit. Um, I think that we saw a little bit. I th we saw it in 2021. We saw it in or sorry in 2022. We saw it in 2023 with his ability to generate more pull side power. I think it's getting better and better as his career wears on, as he starts to fill out his frame more, as he looks more confident in the plate at the plate, as he continues to learn what pitches he can do damage to. I think that's getting a lot better as he kind of continues to wear on. So um, overall, just a really professional hitter, and that ability really low or really raises that floor that that worst potential outcome we see from James Trianzos. We'll get into that a little bit more later, but I think like that pure hit ability makes him a really like safe player to bet on. So let's talk about his weaknesses though. So weaknesses with James Trianzos mostly revolve around his ability to play quality defense. So um, he was drafted as a shortstop. He was a shortstop in high school. Um, he was also a, a pitcher in high school that put up really good <laughs> velocities with a fastball. Um, but he's a shortstop in high school. Um, he, after he was drafted, he played second base um, for a majority of his time down in Arizona in that 2021 season. And then in 2022, he spent most of the year playing third base for the South Bend Cubs, almost the entire year. 
Uh, that really changed this past year in 2023, where he saw most of the year you'll see 66% of his games were playing second base. We'll throw that 19% at DH out of the equation uh, because that doesn't really matter as much in the minor leagues. Um, he got very few games in at third base, and he got a couple games in actually in center field, which is kind of crazy to see. So really weaknesses, I, I don't see him as being a plus defender at either second base or third base or even in the outfield. Um, it's it's tougher to say in the outfield because we just haven't seen him there enough. But I think the athleticism is there to a certain degree. He just doesn't quite look comfortable at either second or third. I'd love to see the Cubs pick one of third base or second base, develop him there, and then be able to fall back on him playing left field or center field um, as he continues to climb the ladder. But it's really that defensive profile that holds him up. I think that also you're looking at a guy that like he needs to continue to develop that power potential, um, that power needs to come. Because if not, you're looking at a, at a guy in James Triantos that's really, just really a contact-only, non-defensive player um, that can't hit for power. That's not a very valuable player. I have a lot of confidence in him abil his ability to either develop power or develop into an, a, an average defensive player. And I think that then makes him valuable. Um, but I'm kind of hedging those bets, ranking him 10. I believe in the contact ability so much and that that feel to hit so much that I'm still ranking him as a top 10 prospect in this organization, despite the defensive concerns, despite the power question marks um, that just goes to show that that contact ability is absolutely there. So let's talk about potential outcomes on what we might see from James, James Triantos. So I think the ceiling with James, I think you're looking at a peak outcome of something that looks similar to a poor man's version of Matt Shaw's peak value, right? That is a um, an average defensive second baseman that um, makes a whole lot of contact and has a high average, but does not quite get to that like full blown power potential. Like he's not really a 25 home run guy every single year. That's just kind of a poor man's version of peak value Matt Shaw. On the other end of the spectrum, I think that his floor is a poor man's version of, of Matt Shaw's floor, right? I think that you, the, the, the worst possible scenario is what I kind of indicated before with the weaknesses where he still makes a ton of contact, but the exit belows don't support power. He doesn't get the ball in the air nearly enough, so he's not hitting for more than 15, 10 or 15 home runs a year, and he's also not getting any value from playing defensively at second base, third base of the outfield. So that's where you like you're you're banking on one of either the defensive value to hit or the power to hit. And if one of those happen, then you're getting closer to that ceiling. If neither of those happen, it's I'm pretty confident you're getting on that floor. He'll always have that contact ability. He'll always have that field to hit and that brings that floor up to a reasonable level. That brings that floor up to like major league depth for sure, you know. Um but I'd like to see him kind of identify a position where he can get better. Can he be a second baseman long-term? If so, if he can be average there, that's awesome. Now, where does he play in Chicago for, for that? That's a bigger question, and that gets more into the timeline for James Triantos. So he did finish the year last year in AA Tennessee. That was big, right? That's big. So that means that he will for sure start off the 2024 campaign playing for the AA Tennessee Smokies. Now, where he plays, it could be really interesting, right? Because I'm curious to see where Matt Shaw ends up playing for those same Smokies in 2024. If Matt Shaw is a third baseman, then is James Triantos the second baseman for, the, for that team? If Matt Shaw is at shortstop to start off the year, is James Tri Triantos at third base? Do they go full bore into the outfield experiment? Is James Triantos now an outfielder for the, the, the Chicago Cubs organization? That's to be determined. But I think that we see him in, in AA Tennessee to start off the 2024 campaign. I think that I would... I have a, a pretty great expectation that we see him all the way up in AAA to end the year for sure, whether that's midseason or towards the end of the year. I think that I would be shocked if James Triantos did not end the, end the year in AAA Iowa. I think that puts him on a timeline for a 2025 uh, Major League call-up for sure, whether that's opening day or deeper into the year. I think we for sure see James Triantos at the Major League level in 2024. Now, it's just a question of, do we see him doing that in Chicago? Do we see him doing that for another organization as a part of a trade? I think that trade could happen as early as this offseason. It could happen at next year's trade deadline. It could happen next offseason. I think that, that James Triantos is a good example of a guy, along with someone like Alexander Canario, where like we already have that type of player in the organization. And I think that James Triantos could be very, very good at the major leagues, at the major league level. Um, and I'm just, I'm not sure where I see that at the, at the, the Chicago Cubs, for the Chicago Cubs. So, 
curious to see where his path takes him over the next, I don't know, 24 months or so. That could be really interesting. So, uh, but first, we've got to see him in 2024 in AA Tennessee, and that should be really fun. So, I uh, hope you guys liked what you've seen uh, of this prospect profile from James Triantos. If you guys have any comments, leave them below. Really curious to see if you think that James Triantos will be traded. If you think, if you guys think that James Triantos is kind of how he compares to Matt Shaw and how you view these guys, how they can, but they both compare to a guy like Nico Horner and how you view them. So uh, give me your thoughts on James Triantos below. Be sure to subscribe. Like I said, I've got one more, I think for sure one more video, maybe more coming. Uh, Moises Ballesteros is up next. He's my number 11 ranked prospect in the Cubs organization. Uh, be sure to subscribe and hit that alert button so you know when that video gets posted. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll talk to you guys very soon.